Hey channel, Fernando from SkyFi Audio. Well, Christmas has arrived early this year and we just got our first load of Klipsch product. Everything here is from the Heritage series, which is what's gonna be our focus over this next year. Absolutely love the brand. And when it was time for us to add a speaker maker, it was a real easy choice. Klipsch uh, and their Heritage series is doing a tremendous job with the products. So we've got our first order in. I've got three sets here, one set of Scalas, a set of Fortes, and a set of um, heresies. And in this video, we're gonna open some of these and uh, take a good look at what we've got. I got three different finishes and three different sizes, probably the sweet spot for Klipsch. If you got room for some, something bigger, yes, the Klipsch corns would be a tremendous addition to this. We're tight on space here, so we are gonna manage to sort of find a good home for these speakers, and we're gonna try them out with a bunch of different amps. We have a lot of really great amps that could potentially do a good job with these speakers. Uh, low watt stuff, like 5, 10, 15, 20 watts. It's all you need for with, uh, with this series. So hang on, this video is gonna be about 30 minutes or so. We're gonna dive in. So we're gonna start with, th with these heresies, which are the smallest of the lifts. So first and foremost, whenever I unpack a pair of speakers, I always look and see what the unpacking instructions are. It's just a little tip. I've unpacked hundreds of speakers and they're all just slightly different. And it's the difference between hurting yourself or breaking the speaker or having a great experience. Here we see that we need to take off the top piece, flip the box over, clearing all the flaps, and then straight out and it'll be standing on its feet. So that should be fairly easy. I'm gonna jump right to it. Okay, so first impressions are spot on what, from what I expected. Um, I struggled to pick color for the, the Heresy, which is the smaller of the Heritage series. And my, um, my rep, um, Seth, said that the black is actually a lot better in person than you'd imagine. I'm not a fan of black speakers. I try to tend to avoid them, especially high gloss affairs, but I think it's spot on. Um, the grain on this black shows very, very nicely right through the sort of middle of the road um, in terms of glossiness. And the salt and pepper uh, grill is gorgeous. It really makes it stand out. Uh, if this was a black grill, I wouldn't be a fan, but this grill absolutely makes the speaker, makes it kind of look vintage and modest in size. And uh, it's gonna be a great fit with our vintage systems. Another th nice surprise is the fact that they finally uh, abandoned all the speaker posts that always break. These are in fact magnetic. We've got some neodymium magnets there and these little cups that will center them. And these are made out of rubber, so um, it sits really nicely in the cabinet. And uh, it is a pleasure to, to remove and put back, as you can see. So, All right, I've got the Heresy 4 up on the workbench to get a closer look. Uh, having it at eye level makes a big difference. I also put it on a turntable so you could kind of see both sides of it or all four sides actually. So the four is an improvement over the three in a couple of areas. They have gone for the first time ever, and this is a significant change to the heresies. Uh, they've gone to a ported cabinet. Um, and listen, there are uh, plenty of fans out there of, of sealed cabinets, but if you just want a little bit of more oomph, there's no better way to get it than by porting the cabinet. So they've reworked the crossover and ported the woofer, and now we've got quite a bit more bass, and that's really the only thing where the heresy was lacking. It now goes down another 10 uh, hertz in frequency response, which is pretty remarkable, and you no longer need a subwoofer to get these guys to really, really sing. Now, you have to be careful, because if they're gonna go in a corner, uh, porting towards the back can be a little tricky, but generally I don't see these speakers being used in corners of the room. I see them kind of being used flanking a system, much like we did over there, which I'll show you in a bit. Now, other than the, uh, the porting, they've uh, upgraded the binding post to something pretty chic. They've got some uh, metal anodized uh, four-way or five-way binding posts with jumpers, so real, real clean uh, aesthetic and uh, a nice quality jump. I, it's one of my pet peeves in some of the earlier speakers having these sort of crappy plastic uh, five-way binding posts. So I love to see something like this. At this price range, you'd expect it. And for some reason, a lot of manufacturers just kind of cheap out at the backside of it, which is a bummer. But kudos to Clips for making that nice improvement. 
And then we talked about earlier the magnetic grill, another nice upgrade. Uh, we see so many speakers here at SkyFi Audio with broken posts on the grills. So no more of that nonsense. They've gone modern uh, with the magnets. Now I read in the manual that these rubber spaces are really only for traveling or for shipping. So you're supposed to remove them to allow the magnets to make contact. And that makes sense because we've only got four in place. Um, so even though they do stay, the magnets are strong enough to grab the grill, we're supposed to remove these for shipping, which I'm not going to do because uh, these will probably go to someone's house and we want them to travel safely. So I have a lot of listening time with Heresies, but not this model, but the more of the original earlier versions and probably more than any other speaker that I've ever heard. And I'll tell you why. Here at SkyFi, we have four of these Heresies. Uh, mounted as our house speaker so you can see it up there high up in the corner mounted upside down and we have not one but four there's another one on this side of the shop over there and then over my work area I've got another one with a grill on and then over where Elliot sits there's a fourth one they're part of our house system and it's what we listen to the most here now we could have had any speaker, we could have done just about anything, but the Heresies seem to be the right fit for us, and boy do they rock. Uh, all four of them, we're driving them with quite a few watts from a central system. They can fill this space almost like a nightclub. We're absolutely, absolutely great sound. And the horns really reach far into the room, so they're, um, it's a nice even sound throughout the shop. So it's not critical listening, but I have a lot of, a lot of hours by working here and listening as background music. We have music playing here you know, nine, 10 hours a day. Looking at the business end of the speaker, not much has changed here. We still have this sort of vintage designed uh, 12 inch woofer um, and then horns for both the mids and the highs. So not a lot of evolution here, even though uh, these are as good as a crossover. So the fact that the crossover has been reworked tells you something. And I understand this sort of version has been voiced to match some of the larger speakers in the Heritage series. So that if you're a mix and matching, you're using these for sides or centers or rears, you get a similar voicing to match the, for example, the Klipsch Corns or the La Scala. So nice, uh, nice little touch there. Now, if you're a friend of the channel, you know that we like to look inside of things, so this is no exception. I'm going to crank this open and see what it's made out of. So, let's have a look. Looks like we've got... Looks like a hex, or actually it's a Torx. Let's go find that in the toolbox. I'm going to guess it's... I'm really bad at guessing, so I don't even know why I do this. I'm going to guess it's going to be one of these guys. I'm going to grab three just in case. All right, so obviously don't do this at home, right? Let, leave this uh, up to us to void a warranty and mess around with the internals. There's no reason for you to peek inside now that you've got this video. Um, it was fairly easy to get out. I had to pull the back plate out. I did this off camera. Uh, that way I could access the back of the magnet to give it a little nudge. Uh, and it came right out. So the first thing we see is that they're using uh, spade terminals or um, instead of soldered cables. Uh, typical of vintage speakers. Uh, and then the crossover is mounted here on the inside. You can have a peek here. And then you can see that the, the port uh, extends pretty far into the cabinet, about three or four inches. That's just to get the right amount of pressure built into the cabinet. Um, also on the inside, we've got it labeled. It's pretty cool. Looks like they use the same label that they use on the back. And then we see that the cabinet is lined, not too generously, but just probably the right amount of, uh, of foam to deaden the inside space. On the woofer, no surprises here. We've got a, a low excursion woofer. Um, again, a vintage style that is doped with some sort of um, oil product. And it is a stamped basket with, uh, with porting in them and the voice coil. So no surprises here. This is probably the same woofer they've been using for a long, long time.
All right, so here we have the speaker fully disassembled. I've got the tweeter, the mid-range, and the woofer out of the cabinet. And let's talk a little bit about the drivers. So the woofer, the 12-inch woofer, uh, is made out of a fiber composite. Um, and its duties are essentially from the low end all the way up to 850 hertz. That's its cutoff for the mid-range. Um, and as I mentioned earlier, this woofer or the enclosure combination with the woofer used to go down to 58 hertz and they've improved it by a 10 hertz, which is a massive improvement uh, and really the sweet spot. 48 hertz is really what we want to see at a minimum out of a, a cabinet this size. Um, and then the other thing to note is that that port there has the typical shape of a Tractix uh, enclosure. So it reduces, not enclosure, but a port or horn. So it reduces the, uh, the noise of the air rushing by it. And that's why it's kind of a, a little unconventional in shape. Moving on to the mid-range. The mid-range responsibility, which we've got right here, it is a compression horn driver, and it picks up at the 850 hertz, and it goes all the way up to 4,500 hertz. It's uh, the new uh, K702 mid-range horn, which is actually pretty cool because it's found in the, uh, the Cornwall 4. So great uh, trickle-down economics that we've got. Uh, the the mid-range from that great speaker down at this level. Uh, and I'll go ahead and open this up in a tiny bit. Uh, and then finally, the tweeter, that picks up uh, at 4,500 and goes to 20 kilohertz, which is well above uh, most humans' hearing range. It is a titanium dome, uh, and it's got a new face plug that they've designed in order to get a little bit better dispersion out of it. And it does use that same uh, Tratrex uh, shape for, for good dispersion as we've known from clips for many years. Now, um, altogether as a system, this has a 99 dB efficiency. If you're not familiar with that, what that means, it's essentially how much power is needed in order to drive this. The higher the number, the less power that is required. And this is why we love clip speakers, is that we can actually play around with low power amplifiers uh, because of the extreme efficiency. And, uh, and they'll also play very loud with very little power, all the way up to 116 dB maximum on this particular speaker. Now, Clips recommends 100 watts, but I suspect that's a, a lot. I think they're kind of like playing it safe, wanting you to make sure you've got plenty of power so that you don't damage the speaker. But I bet you these will sing with as little as 10 to 15 watts, and that's what we're gonna find out later on. All right, opening up the back of this uh, K702, the first thing I noticed is that these screws were likely held in place with Loctite. So we'll be sure to refresh that on the way back so that the next owner gets a perfect speaker. Um, here is the 1.75 inch. As you can see right there, quite delicate. It's inverted, just like most compression drivers are. The other thing that's interesting is these rubber plugs around the dome uh, seem to slot right into uh, the pretty elaborate metal backing to the to the horn. Very, very interesting. Now looking at the crossover, it's a fairly standard affair. We've got a PC board mounted components attached to the side of the cabinet. Um, and it uses, it's really a three-way crossover and um, it's based on a steep slope design, uh, much like the Scala's, the, the Clip Scorns, or the Cornwall's. So again, trickle down design and engineering, uh, you know, from the flagship products down into the entry of the Heritage series. All right, so enough messing around with the internals. I'm gonna go ahead and reassemble this speaker and get it over into a listening position. One last thing worth noting is how this uh, couples to the floor. Uh, they've installed fairly typical metal uh, sliders that you would see in, in sort of entry-level furniture. Um, only several of the tabs are actually affixed to the rim. You can see one of them hanging out here, uh, which is surprising for a speaker at this level. Now, they did provide a set of rubber feet, but the problem with these rubber feet, if we stick them to either the metal or the wood, is that when you go to slide them, they're going to rip right out. So this is really the only area of, of build disappointment. You know, it would have been nicer to have something a bit more presentable, maybe a threaded insert with, uh, with the ability to change between rubber and metal sliders, but minor thing. Um, you know, these are going to be on, on the floor. They're going to be in a carpet or wooden, on a wooden surface, so it should be fine just with the metal sliders.
All right, before we power these on, I just wanted to show you why we are, you know, Klipsch dealers, right? We, we sell quite a bit of vintage systems, right? This is a very typical setup for us. We've got a, a beautifully restored uh, BIOS MX110 from Macintosh. It's a preamp tuner. Down below, we've got a, a Macintosh 225, which is a 25 watt times two vintage uh, tube amp, which is our favorite from that era. The smaller they get, the sweeter they sound. Um, and a really cool piece of furniture with some bronze accents. And then a modern uh, project turntable. This could have been a Lin LP12, you know, from the 80s. This could have been anything, but uh, we, pop, we picked this from our stash because it looks so great. Um, and as you can see, we like to kind of mix and match modern and vintage to get the best results and to have a, a bigger palette to choose from. And look how good the, the heresies look next to the system. It's just the right size. The grills are absolutely gorgeous and they fit right in aesthetically, which is equally important for us at SkyFi. You know, we put a lot of uh, systems together through a program we call the concierge service where clients hire us to do a complete system and to kind of work with them over a few weeks period in, in sourcing all the correct stuff, then putting it all together and then sending it as a system. So for us, it was, um, it was important to have a, a speaker to pick from that could go with the kind of look and feel. And this is a very typical system for us and the look is very typical for us. Now, this could have just as easily have gone out with a pair of vintage L100s, which I've got right here. Right, but we don't always have L100s. They're really hard to source, especially in good shape. So, um, and maybe we wanted a speaker that could go a little louder than an L100. And uh, that's where the Heresy is a great fit for us. Um, now for this system, yes, I would have ordered in Walnut. The Walnut finish is one of my favorite finishes from Klipsch. Uh, I ordered a black because I wanted to see what these grills were like, but obviously in this system with that sort of cabinet and wood finishes, the Walnut, the American Walnut would have been a, a better fit aesthetically. Okay, so now we've got the Heresies hooked up to our first system. This is what I call first light or first sound. Uh, we've, uh, we've given this some thought and we're going to start at the absolute bottom of the amplification power range. These are actually around 4 watts per channel. These are loft and white designed um, amplifiers. I think they're built by James Burgas. Uh, it's almost like a cottage maker. I don't have a lot of info on these, but I do know they use Telefunken tubes, which is super cool. It's a single tube. Uh, about four watts per channel. These are mono amplifiers, obviously. They've got two taps on the back. I've hooked them up to the eight ohm tap. And, um, and for a preamp, we ended up just picking a Marantz uh, vintage uh, preamp from our lot. And I've had a few minutes to listen uh, and a few things come to mind. Um, first of all, four watts does it tremendous job at powering these speakers. It's absolutely surprising. And I have this conversation with clients all the time about sort of matching amplifiers to speakers. Now these are 99 dB efficiency, which is very high or in, not a super high efficiency level, but I consider these um, very high. So that gives us a lot of possibilities. We could use anything as we've have done now for four watts and we could go up to probably 100 watts, which is what Klipsch recommends for these. So what I'm going to do over the next couple of weeks is sort of try different power ratings and see what the sweet spot is for Sonics. Um, I've got these now. I have got a pair of um, Quicksilver single, uh, uh, single ended amplifiers, I think around seven or eight watts. And then I've got these really cool Jadi amplifiers, the 845s. They're right over here. Let me show you a, a peek at it. These are about 14, 15 watts, made by Jadi. They're monoblocks. They use a single 845 tube. I bet you these are gonna sound super good.
trying to give you a little taste of what we're hearing here. Now I realize YouTube is not the world's greatest medium to convey uh, to someone what a speaker sound like, but often you guys ask for me to play something and here we are, have it. Um, so I've played up a few seconds of this track. Um, so what am I hearing? I'm hearing incredible, incredible imaging, which is surprising because I can't think of a worse environment than this. Now I've got the speakers around six feet apart and I've got to towed in quite a bit. I love the stands and the orientation that they, the angle that they provide for the speakers. I think it's a real nice addition. I know Klipsch did this a while back, but um, it really does get them situated right at the right spot. So imaging is tremendous. This is a dead center image in a very light feeling airy uh, sonic signature. So, and four watts is plenty. I'm getting tons of bass, a little bit of punch right around 60, 70 Hertz. Uh, just as we'd expect, and, and so far it's really been a, a pleasure. I could sit here and listen for forever. So I've done a few minutes of critical listening here. Um, one of the things I wanted to make sure is that the grills themselves do not get in the way of the, of the speaker. Um, it's a pretty thick fabric, uh, much more than you would find in a modern speaker. So I was concerned that it might have an effect and it does not, I could not tell the difference between um, them being on or being off. So pretty good experience for, for the first light here with the, uh, with the heresies. Uh, I've really enjoyed uh, playing with them and seeing what's inside of them. Um, these will be available on our website at skyfiaudio.com as, as, as well as other Clips her, um, Heritage speakers from the line. So please visit us online at skyfiaudio.com. Drop a note if you have any questions. I'm sure I've made three, four, maybe even 10 mistakes in this video. I love to hear from you guys. And give me some recommendations uh, down in the comments below as to what sort of amplifier you'd like to hear with these. Um, you know, whether it be solid state tubes, the power rating. As a matter of fact, even look through our, our inventory and see if there's something very specific that you're curious about. And I'll put it together. The next video I do on these will be with two or three different amplifiers and we'll see if we can take them to the ultimate level and figure out what the right power requirements are and what the combination of of, uh, of output devices. So right below, give me some feedback. I'd love to hear from you guys and thanks for watching.